Hello and you are very welcome back to DaVinci Resolve A to Z, your one stop for all things DaVinci Resolve and in today's episode we take an in-depth look at the luminance versus saturation curve. Luminance versus saturation curve, a curve that I use pretty much non-stop. So as always, how do we get to it? You can select the drop down menu and click on it or you can click through your different curves here until you land on luminance versus saturation. Now what does that mean? And this applies to all the versus curves. The first item is what you're selecting. The second is how you are adjusting it. So basically we're selecting a luminance value and we're gonna to adjust to the level of saturation of that luminance. So what does that mean in practice? Well, let's take a look at this shot. We've done our primary corrections and then what we did is we added a quick and dirty teal orange look. So let's add another node and now we're going to use the luminous versus saturation to fine tune that teal orange look. On our graph here, left to right is shadow to highlight values. And then up and down is the level of saturation, which means let's select a mid-tone value and we can increase the saturation of mids or we could pull down the saturation of mids. Uh, and with no placeholders, most of the image gets affected in some way, shape, or form. Highlights keep their level of saturation and start to roll off and then back up in the shadows. Uh, let's reset that though. We can use this to do two things. We can increase the oranges and we can decrease the blue in the shadows a bit to make this a bit more of a, a pleasing teal orange look. So what we'll do is let's set a placeholder there and just make sure the value stays at one. So basically we set a placeholder in the kind of lower third of our values for luminance. Let's take our black point and pull all the saturation out of it. So basically what we're doing is our absolute black has zero saturation and it fades back into having some saturation as we get up to this luminance value. And if we hit control D, you can see what that's doing to our image. And straight away, that's much more pleasing because light, that's just the way it works. The darker something gets, the less saturation there is because light, uh, black is technically not a color uh, in terms of light. It's an, it's an absence of light. It's not a shade of color. So there shouldn't be any saturation in the absolute darkest values. And you could further fine tune that, but for tutorial's sake, we can leave it at that because you get the gist of what that does. Now let's look, we did that by placing manually points on the curve here. Let's look at a more precise way of doing things and another way of doing things. With the qualifier tool selected, we will select a luminance value in here. And you can see that on our graph, we get two placeholders and our actual value. With the actual value selected, let's increase the saturation levels quite extremely so we can kind of expose a problem. Um, you can see that the luminance values selected are very uh, tight in boundary. So what you might want to do then and by jacking up that saturation, you can really see obviously where your problems lie. We can take this value and we can expand it out. And we can take this volume, uh, value and expand that out. Now we're starting to get somewhere. So we're increasing the saturation of the mids to do with those shafts of light. And now we can start reining in the saturation. Now that we've kind of figured out you know, where the luminous values of those thing, uh, those items sit, we can start reining in just how much we're increasing those values of saturation. So they're not so extreme. And like that, we have taken shadows and made them cleaner. And we've also increased the saturation level of those light rays, increased how orangey they are. And obviously you could go fine tuning that some more, but this is just a quick and dirty look at luminance versus saturation and that's it in a nutshell. You can take a luminance value and increase or decrease the level of saturation. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered in this tutorial? Let me know in the comment section below so I know to cover it in a future video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss, whoa, went high pitched there, so you don't miss future uploads. My name is Lee Dalton, this is DaVinci Resolve A to Z. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.